when you look at scalability too, a lot of these commercial grows, they think they can replicate everything uh, MSO style, you know, multi-state operators. And unless you're following SOPs like that, instead of just looking at the VPD, which is still great, but it's like as our science evolves, people aren't understanding that the plant is, is never necessarily evolved. The science is evolving. We're understanding how to optimize it better. And that's never been something for me that I've looked at as the surface leaf temperature. I know it's been a factor, but I'm always just the VPD, you know, the ambient everything. And I think that that's, that's a great point, man. Well, the, yeah, VPD is also so important. It's kind of it's crazy because I, like, I deal with a lot of old school growers that just they're not on social media. You know, they've never like they, they don't even know how to log into Instagram or anything like that. And they just haven't even been at it at all. And it's like I'll be saying the same thing to them. Well, I've seen people take LEDs and they can't figure out what's going on or like why they're having issues. Why are we having pr problems? And it's like I, I walk them through that and it's just like an eye opener. And it's like you almost can always like if you're having real issues and something, it's just not growing right. That's where you need to start. Because like if it's getting as you get further into the crop, it is totally OK to get that temperature down. But if you try doing it in the earlier stages, it's just uh it can just screw up the plant in so many different ways that I've seen. And not only that, if the second you have adjust the temperature, it can take three or four days or maybe a little bit longer for the plant to adjust and start to get happy. But if you ever see like a plant that's kind of droopy and it's just not happy and you can't figure out what's going on, that's one of like the things that is usually a, a huge problem that I find. They're just, it's getting too cold and you try to veg with it when it's too cold or go into flower, you're just going to have so many different problems. Yeah. And that that's the factors that where people say they don't want to overcomplicate it. The old school growers and again, the HPS growers, I guess if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Maybe they're they're already having this dialed in. Like I feel for years, I've already been working my VPD chart before I even knew what the, the acronym meant. And it's just because of the temperature and humidity. But now as you can refine it even more again, from the light spectrum to looking at the surface leaf temperature. Now we're not talking just LEDs versus HPS. It's specific technology versus HPS. And I think the LED term is thrown around too loosely these days. Yeah. And I, you know, that term, if it's not broken, don't like, don't fix, or you don't need to fix it. I agree with that in the sense where like going back to my HPS days and just for me to even try the very first LED, I refused to even buy one because I was like, screw this. Like we, we were at the top of the chain, like in dispensaries and stuff here before everything. Um, we had this legal transition, like before it went legal here in British Columbia, there was like over a hundred uh, dispensaries like in downtown Vancouver that all had permits from the city where they were paying $25,000 a year for the permit. And the, you know, the Vancouver, the VPD, the Vancouver police department would give them basically uh, like the green light, as long as you weren't like doing too much stuff or having too kind of shady of people. And yeah, like, it's like when you're doing, having such a good product that you're is at the top, it's like, well, why would I want to change anything? So I can really relate to that. But, um, you know, after doing, I remember the very first crop with doing an LED and I was going, holy cow, okay, this is pretty crazy because, you know, our electricity bills and like I've had places where it's $70,000 every two months for our electricity bills and just like insane bills where it's like when you talk about cutting your power, like, I, you know, a lot of people I think kind of exaggerated. I think it's really safe to say like a minimum of 30% and in some cases, pushing 35 like 40 percent i don't i don't like leaving yourself short like so i like almost having more light than you need it just in case also yeah that's one thing i noticed about the uh, borg evolution uh, i have one of those shout out to you uh, my friend for sending me one of those uh, awesome awesome light so far um, there's so many different options on there and one of the things that you had uh, recommended is uh, cool white throughout the entire veg stage and then kind of shifting over to um, something else for flowering. I haven't actually got to flowering yet uh, with this light, so I haven't made the switch yet. But very high wattage, you know, you have way more wattage than you actually need, but you're running it at a low, you're not running it at a full power 100%, right? You're running at a lower wattage, which increases the lifespan of the fixture as well. So that's a, that's a benefit that I think a lot of people don't really catch on to. At, you know, it's, it's so deceiving because you'll see so many people making comments. Why do you need a 1500 watt light? Like, why do you like, and they're just criticizing it, but they don't realize that that extra wattage is for diversity. It's just like any other light. There's no real reason to go over 750 watts in a five by five space, let's just say, or even in a four by four, it's like sometimes hard to push at 600. Like I see people that have Borgs for every four by four 
and you know they it's challenging for them to even get it up to 700 watts like especially when you have them um in, like in a, a group of them right next to each other you get a bit of overlapping and the only time you have any type of droppage is where there's a wall um, and speaking of the Borg Evolution, so we actually, and higher wattage, we have the V3 version that's coming out, actually. Um, I think at, by the end of next month, it will be landing. And it actually is capable of 1,700 watts. And the reason why we've given the extra wattage is we've given, instead of 600 watts on cool white and warm white, we've upped it to 700 watts. And we just want to give people that extra wattage. Like we, we are, it was already capable of doing that, but we were dialing back the drivers, like programming them to only go at 600 watts. So we thought, Hey, well, we'll give people that extra wattage if they need it. Like it's pretty rare, but sometimes people want to get the light way higher up. I don't recommend having it 48 inches away from your canopy or 36. Cause I think it's a waste of photons. Um, but a lot of people do it. And, and also what has come comes with the V3, we've mm -hmm. actually added plastic mm -hmm. covers so that um, they're actually plastic removable covers that go over the diodes. And so if somebody want, like a lot of people like it for cleaning, like we don't like people like wiping down diodes that even though they have a silicone coat, you don't really want to be making contact. So um, there is like, if you're going to clean a regular light without a cover like that, we recommend just spraying like a soapy water and then rinsing it off. But this giving the plastic covers, it gives you the ability for people to wipe them down if they want or um, or remove them if they don't want, because you are losing about 4% light um, through it. Like same with like optics or anything like that, you are going to lose light. But the other really big perk about it is it's gone from 9,000 Kelvin to 18,000 Kelvin, which has really pushed the limits of, it literally doubling the amount of spectrums that you can do. It's gonna push the limits of how much blue you can do. And like without question, you're gonna have tighter internode spacing um, and you can just do so much more. You can do everything that the previous version can, but technically you can do double the spectrums because it's now opened up instead of from 9,000 to 18,000. And we um, we worked with developing the diode actually with it and did a bunch of different testing. Well, when I say develop, a lot of people say they helped develop it. We were working with the company that made the diodes and we tested them out and, you know, and finally uh, achieved to be able to get one that was 18, that, get it up to 18,000 Kelvin. And that was from using ones between 15,000 Kelvin and 20,000 Kelvin. This FTS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code THESTASH15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.